Hello friends, Ant-Man and the Wasp has flown in the theaters, and to celebrate, I've released thousands of ants into the offices of THR. That was you? No. Get out! It's time to discuss what Marvel's latest means for next year's fourth Avengers movie, and where a potential Ant-Man 3 could go. I'm issuing a giant Ant-Man sized warning right now, spoilers ahead. First, a quick recap of where we find our heroes by the end of the movie. Hank Pym successfully rescues his wife Janet Van Dyne, aka the original Wasp, from the Quantum Realm, with help from Scott Lang and Hope Van Dyne, the current Wasp, who fought off Ghost while Hank was completing the mission. While most Marvel villains die, or in Loki's case, appear to die multiple times, and then, you know, actually die, at the end of almost every Marvel movie, Ghost not only survives, but becomes friendly with our heroes after Janet uses her magic quantum powers to help heal the villain. Yes, as Janet explained to Hank just minutes earlier, 30 years in the quantum realm changes who you are, much like freshman year sociology courses. Whoa. It also appears to give you unknown powers. Hmm. Seriously, so much of the movie could have been avoided had Ghost just listened to Lawrence Fishburne when he suggested that she should help the heroes rescue Janet, because Janet might be able to cure her. Morpheus knows what he's talking about. A mid-credits sequence shows that Hank, Janet, and Hope are still experimenting with the Quantum Realm, and sends Scott on a trip there in order to collect some material that will help Ghost with her whole My Molecules Keep Ripping Apart problem. Scott spends a little time in the realm, you know, taking in the sights, and just when his friends are about to bring him up, their intercom cuts out. He thinks it's a joke, but us savvy, learned viewers in the audience discover that the trio has disappeared, courtesy of Thanos' Infinity War snap that obliterated half the life in the universe. What a d Now poor Scott is trapped in the quantum realm, and he doesn't know why, and he doesn't even have a cell phone! It drives speculation into a fever pitch, or maybe just to troll audiences. The very end of the film features the trademark Marvel tagline, Ant-Man and the Wasp will return. Except the period turns into a question mark. Well, do they or don't they, Marvel? Stop toying with us! Okay, here's what we know. Paul Rudd is confirmed to be in Avengers 4, and he is said to have a substantial role. The disappearance of Evangeline Lilly's Wasp was surprising, as she is also known to be in Avengers 4, though she has stated that it's a very small part. Maybe that was just a pun. She's a Wasp. Presumably, Lilly will show up at some point when all the disappeared heroes return. Because yes, we know they're returning. You aren't fooling us into thinking Spider-Man is really dead, Kevin Feige. Feige! Feige! Whatever. It's a safe bet that the Quantum Realm will play a role in the ultimate defeat of Thanos. Ant-Man and the Wasp establishes that time works differently there, which might explain how Michelle Pfeiffer managed to wear spandex for 30 years and not go completely insane. Hope she had talcum powder. Before Scott enters the Quantum Realm, Janet offhandedly warns him to make sure not to get stuck in a time vortex, otherwise they won't be able to rescue him. Calling it now, Scott is gonna get stuck in a time vortex. I hate to bring up set photos, but here are some set photos. These shots have been so widely picked over that even the Russo bros have weighed in. Yes, part of Avengers 4 does seem to revisit the seminal Battle of New York from 2012's Avengers. Is it possible Scott goes back in time to warn our heroes of what's to come? That certainly would be more useful than a half-naked Bruce Banner crashing through the Sanctum Sanctorum and half-muttering, Thanos is coming. A lot of good that did, Ruffalo. We're all gonna die! As Tony Stark says in Infinity War, all of the problems of the past six years have been Thanos' doing. Though, come on, Tony. It's not like he made you invent Ultron or told you to hunt down Captain America. Projecting. What would and could Tony and his team do with a little more foresight? Gather the stones for themselves? Tell Star-Lord to maybe, you know, just take a chill pill? Eat some more shawarma? Beyond Avengers 4, there's been no official word on an Ant-Man 3, but director Peyton Reed has told Heat Vision he and his team want to make it happen. Against all odds, Reed has created enough Ant-Man-themed super-powered people to rival the Avengers in number. Most intriguing is Janet Van Dyne. We don't know much about her abilities, but given her limited screen time in this installment, it would be a sin not to have an entire movie for Pfeiffer to play superhero. It's a safe bet her mysterious powers will be explored. There's also Bill Foster, a hero of his own given his past as Goliath, and there's also plenty more Ghost could do now that she's presumably acting more heroic. Even Scott's daughter Cassie Lang in the comics becomes a young hero in her own right. This begs the question though, what threat could possibly require all of these folks teaming up? Part of the charm of Ant-Man and the Wasp is that the stakes were lower than in the original film. It wasn't about saving the world, it was about a family trying to find their mom. If Ant-Man does go big, there's one natural enemy, Annihilus. He's a classic villain from the Fantastic Four, a property Peyton Reed actually nearly directed for Fox in the early 2000s. Don't worry though, all the Fantastic Four adaptations we did get turned out super great. How about two guys, a girl, and the thing that nobody wanted? With the Fantastic Four potentially joining the MCU, it seems like accidentally unleashing Annihilus from the Quantum Realm could be just the thing to galvanize all of these Ant-Man related heroes together. And perhaps even convince Hank Pym to suit up one last time. Even if it means his life. 
And, you know, while you're at it, why not go really big and use Ant-Man 3 to introduce the Fantastic Four? They could be down there, stuck in the Quantum Realm 2, which would explain why they've missed out on 10 years of MCU history. If Captain America's Civil War could introduce Black Panther and Spider-Man, it's not that much of a stretch to use Ant-Man 3 to bring in the Fantastic Four. Please. So what are your thoughts? What do you want to see in Ant-Man 3? Would you like to see the Fantastic Four come back? Hey, buddy, you can't kill ants with a fly swatter. Oh. You can't?